Shall we begin? Hey there, boys and girls. Bob Kearns, the unsung photographer. Welcome back to the backyard. It's the middle of summer. It is screeching hot. It's in the 90s. It's a little overcast, which is okay with me. Uh, we might even get a little shower in a bit. I hope so. We'll cool it off a little while. Uh, I went out and I did a little shopping. And I went out and bought myself a new light meter. And I can hear the eyes rolling. There they are. Light meters. They seem to be more controversial than one would imagine. Uh, and we will do a video about these and why and how at some point. But for right now, I'm just showing you this because part of the functionality of these new meters is you can calibrate them with your camera. Oh, oh, that's my grandson. So anyway, the calibration process was kind of interesting. Uh, they have all these rather fancy targets you take photos of and you run it through software and it analyzes the dynamic range of your camera and that's all very cool stuff. But, it sort of brought to mind the fact that I think a lot of people have a misunderstanding over uh, white balance and these targets in general. Okay, this is a X-Ray color checker. It's a fairly expensive bit of kit for what's essentially some cardboard glued to a piece of plastic. But, uh, these are calibrated color charts. They're all within a very close tolerance of certain ranges of colors. And you can use them as a tool to control your white balance and your color balance on your photographs, digital photographs. This was much more difficult back in the days of film. Uh, when you were kind of at the mercy of what the film gave you and then you had to correct it when you went to make prints. Or uh, you could do some minor adjustments in the development process of the film, but not really too much. Um, that was always kind of a challenge. Nowadays, digitally, they can take a photo of this. The X-Ray people provide you software that analyzes that grid of colors in your photograph it gives you a profile that you can load into Lightroom and create accurate colors. Well, we don't always want accurate colors, but it's always the best place to start. And if you do any kind of commercial photography uh, or you're doing real fashion or products where um, a color scheme has been established as a part of the brand, they want those colors accurate. And this is the way to do that. However, the other thing that, that's got me thinking about is white balance. So that we know where we're starting with white balance. And they also provide you with a gray car. It's a little lighter than you would normally expect. Uh, it's probably, my guess would be it's maybe a 50% gray as opposed to the 18% gray we typically see. This is another product that provides uh, a gray space that you could use for white balancing. Uh, many people do. Uh, I have a real gray card around here somewhere, I just can't find it at the moment, so we'll presume that that's what this is. Uh, the real gray card is pretty accurate, it's a Kodak one that Chris Marquardt gave me at a workshop. It's shown a little signs of age. Uh, but these are pretty common tools and very often you'll get folks that will take and create a custom white balance based off a gray card. Well, here's the irony there. Listen to what I'm saying. White balance off a of gray card. <sighs> gray cards aren't for white balance. They never have been. Gray cards are developed so that you can take your reflective meter and get an accurate reading. They're used to set exposure. Wow, what do you know? We've just somewhere along the way said, oh, well, we've got a gray card here. Let's use that. And Lightroom even pushes you in that direction. But the fact of the matter is, is gray cards or for setting exposure, not for color balance. Color balance is what this tool is for. We open this up and take a picture of this grid and create that profile for your camera. That's color balance. 
not white balance. So, how do you use a gray card for your exposure? Well, electronically speaking, when we're talking about digital cameras, it's not really all that difficult. We get our digital camera. This is a nice, this is my D800, my favorite 85 millimeter lens. It's a 1.8D, which is just the biggest bang for the buck if you get a chance if you're a Nikon shooter. I highly recommend uh, that lens as a place to start for portraiture. But, give you an idea of the quality of this thing, right? But this, is the, this is the lens hood. It's metal. Beautiful. Absolutely stunningly well made lens. So, let's get in manual here. Uh, let's get our gray card. That's what we're using right now. And you know we're reflective metering always on our camera. We're in manual. And let's point at our gray card. Doesn't have to be in focus. And for 250th of a second, let's drop it down. Go a hundredth of a second. And we're just gonna dial this up till we hit zero. So I get an F7.1, looking only at the, oh, wait a minute, I have a little white in there. Get away from that bit of white. An F6.3, and I'm going to take a picture. And what we're going to get, and I'm sure you can't see that, but I'll show it to you anyway, is a gray square. Now, and I can show this to you on the computer. But for right now, if I put my selector up and you look at the rear of this, hopefully, I doubt very much again that you can see this very well, and I will show you on the computer right now, boom, what you get is a spike. And that spike is your 18% gray. And this actually says we're a little bit overexposed, so I'm going to turn my camera up two-thirds of the stop. I'm up to an F7-1 now, and I'm going to take another picture of that gray. And again, I don't have to be in focus. And I'm a little closer. Let's go another third, another two-thirds, say F9. And we're a little under F8. And bang, we're dead center. And again, I'll show you these right on the computer screen, right now. Look at that spike right dead center. So now that we know our exposure at this moment, the 1 100th of a second, F8 at ISO 100, which is just a couple stops under sunny 16, and that's because it's cloudy and I'm under an umbrella. So that works pretty well. Um, if I want to do a color balance. I would take my chart here, now that I have my exposure, and I would take a nice picture, and this helps if it's at least close to being in focus, of my color chart. And it's got spikes all over the place. Again, I can show you this on the computer. Bang. And we'll look at it in Lightroom. <coughs> but That'll enable me to do a color balance. It's not going to be uh, just a white balance. It's going to be a full color profile. White balance, however, can be taken off of the white square because it's white balance. It's supposed to be white. It's supposed to be taken from white. Anybody that's been in the video industry for years and years where they've dealt with an electronic sensor uh, a lot longer than we have, actually, um, will tell you they use a white card. And they would play little games with the white balance by taking cards that were slightly a little blue to warm things up, or if they want to cool it down, they might have to have a card that's a little shifted towards a warmer color, and then it'll, it'll reverse it. So that's been done for years and years and years. The interesting thing I think about um, these tools is they're fairly complicated. and they're really very specific for specific reasons. You clicking on the gray 
uh, in a photograph or something that you think is gray uh, will get you close to where you want to be as far as white balance. However, they're very seldom, unless you pay a lot of money for a particularly uh, calibrated piece of material, that is going to be an actual true gray. So it's always going to be a little subjective. This is kind of an interesting. I think these are about 30 bucks. And this is actually called the new one-shot 14-inch pocket digital calibration target by PhotoVision. I've had this for a couple of years. <clears throat> and I've seen other folks with them, so they're fairly popular. But if you notice, it has a black, a gray, and a white section. So, how you use this is you would take a photograph showing all three bands. Yeah. Oh, and it's gotten a little brighter. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Try and get the light even. That's a little more even over here. I the sun came out a bit. And I can show you here, and you can tell uh, that we're a little under. Now we're a little over. And there we are, we're right on. We see a white peak. Well, now we see three peaks. Your neutral peak, a white, and a black-ish. It's really a darker gray. Uh, but they sit right about in the middle of those three divisions you'll see in any um, chart. That all works pretty well. So that's how these work. The other handy thing about them is they fold up fairly small. Right? And on the other side, they have a little silver reflector, which can be, oh, I don't know. Is it useful? Not really too much. It's a little too small. But I guess it could come in handy. But it's there. And it's easy to take and shove in your camera bag. As a matter of fact, I've been carrying this thing around, I don't know, forever. Half the time I forget it's there because it's so light. And it's handy to have. Also, if you use the same target all the time, even if it's not perfect, at least your photographs will be consistent and you can set your import settings up to make the adjustments you need to to get them right. Um, the color checker, again, if you're doing anything where color is critical, if you're doing anything commercial or for print or um, something where people are very fussy about color, even some family portraits I think need to be uh, pretty color perfect. People get very... Uh, fussy about grandma's dress or whatever it is, you want it to look the same, it's a good investment. Uh, for the casual photographer who's just shooting for themselves, uh, I don't know, it's a pretty steep investment, it's about a hundred bucks, so whether you want to bother with that or not, I think it's kind of an evaluation of what you're doing with your photography. So there's a quick rundown and a bit of a surprise to learn that, hey, great cards, Aren't for white balance. White is for white balance. Gray is for exposure. So you guys take it easy. Yeah, have a good time, and we'll see you next time on the Unsung Photographer. Later. Shall we begin?